Hi, I'm Joe Montag, and I'm here with uh, Jason Conway from J Aussie. Uh, we're here to discuss the JRC system and kind of go over some of those different uh, setup stuff as well as uh, some troubleshooting right now. So thanks, Jason. Thanks for joining me. You bet. Thank you. So um, let's go through uh, what do you see as some of the different issues or some things um, that growers could do for troubleshooting maybe a sensor that's uh, not connecting right. Okay. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that one, the sensor is properly installed on the machine where the flow is from top to bottom. Um, and by top to bottom, I mean where JIC is pointing in the correct direction and the flow would be from top down. So that's one of the first things. We also want to make sure that we pay attention to um, the position of the sensor on the hose. Um, so we have a, an, a Wi-Fi antenna icon on top of the sensor. We always want to make sure that that's either towards the back of the implement, if it's in a vertical installation, or if it's perpendicular or horizontal, we want the two S's up, straight up in the sky. So those are a couple of things we want to do. We also want to look at the position on the, on the implement itself. This one right here is in an ideal location because it has plenty of room for the sensor to bounce as, as the implement's in motion, um, and that helps the sensor to wake up. Um, if you have an installation that's too close to the shank down here where the hose is very rigid, or if it's up against the chassis, you will have problems with them waking up again just because they don't, they don't um, receive that that bouncing that that vibration for them to wake up inside I see okay and what are some things that uh, if let's say we've checked the the rotation of it we've checked the location and that's all good uh, and the sensor is maybe it's old or it's past its uh, time where the battery's going out where how do you uh, replace that sensor okay so um, once we have addressed the initial system, we have here the system that we that we set up, and it's it's um, everything is communicating except for let's say row number two. Okay, we would get our brand new sensor. We would of course uh, mark on here the row number. Then we would power on our system, and then just repeat um, installation just like you would would with a brand new installation. So we would go to F5. We would confirm that the uh, to add a new sensor. We would select the row unit that we want to um, to change out. In this case, it's row two. We'll confirm that with the power button. And, and I see the two lights are flashing back and forth. Exactly. That that is the way the user, the operator, will know that it's in configuration mode. So here it's ready to address uh, sensor number two. So let's say we've already got this as our brand new sensor. We're going to shake it up kind of vigorously. We're going to take our magnet, put that right there on right between the two S's and hold it for about five seconds. And of course, because we're doing this live, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So <laughs> be a little bit aggressive on there. Shake that up. There we go. Now it's addressed. Perfect. All right. So we're doing a little bit of permitted maintenance on this machine. We got to this row here. We noticed that it's not correctly installed. We do not have the, the two, the name J Aussie straight up in the sky. So I went ahead and taken these hose clamps um, loose. And all we want to do is just rotate the the sensor on the row, it's on the hose itself. Get that to where the JIC is pointing straight up in the sky. Then just uh, replace your hose clamps. All right. As far as our yearly maintenance too, we want to make sure that there's no um, kind of buildup on the inside of, of the sensor. So we've already removed this hose clamp here. We just want to break that loose there. Look up in here, any kind of accumulation or, or um, build up a product on the inside, we want to make sure and clean that out with the bottle brush or with a, uh, some kind of a scraper. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the maintenance side of things. Uh, what do you recommend uh, 
after the end of the year or some things that you would uh, like us to check for a farmer, for instance, to check on um, after the end of the year and put yep. it away? That's a very good subject and thank you for bringing that up. Um, just like maintenance on your tractor, on your implement, that's very important. It's very important to, to um, at least once a year go through and take a look at our, our system as well. One, you want to look at the rotation of the sensor on the hose, ensure it's in the correct position so that it's communicating correctly. You want to check the rubber couplers to make sure that there's no drying or cracking. Um, and you also want to take a look at the hoses and make sure that it's, it's installed correctly because if you have a angle inside your hose, that could also cause um, a a, pos a possible uh, blockage point. So you want to take care um, and look at all of those. Um, once a year it is suggested that you remove the sensor and take a look at the inside of the of the sensor oh, sure. um, to make sure that there's no buildup um, because you know a lot of times we'll have a little bit of moisture in the air early mornings um, with high moisture and you get a, a um, buildup on the inside of the sensor and that causes the sensor not to hear the hits or the the fertilizer going through there as well so it gets muffled so if you do have a accumulation of product on the inside of the sensor it's very easily um, you're taken care of you just pop the 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 connectors off and then you take a bottle brush or a screwdriver and clean that out um, these are also IP65 rated so you can also take them off and wash them with mild soap and water if you want to um, they're not, you wouldn't recommend like a power washer though? You can power wash them. I would just avoid, just like like any electronics on your vehicle, you don't want to put a 1600 pound yep. pressure right on it. 